Kevin Graham. I'm Tana. We're Crystal Street Comics, and we're going to bring you a list of uh, movie endings that we think really helped make that movie. They're not necessarily the best endings, but they really helped to sell the movie. Um, we're going to go ahead and give you the list first, because this is going to be a spoiler-heavy video. So our list is going to consist of Fight Club, The Departed, Repo Men, Memento, Sixth Sense, The Empire Strikes Back, Chasing Amy, First Blood and Rocky, Jason Goes to Hell, The Oceans Movies, and Goodwill Hunting. So that's the list. We're going to start to talk about them now. So again, if you don't want them spoiled, turn the video off now. All right, you're still here. So uh, we can just assume that you've either seen these movies or don't care for maybe the surprise ending or however these endings make the movie better and you're going to hear them anyway so uh we're going to start with let's just start at the top yeah uh, we'll, we'll start with fight club this is one of those movies i saw really late um so i unfortunately had the ending spoiled for me before i had seen it um but the the payoff at the end of this movie is so good even when i knew it just like it blew your mind that the whole time these guys were actually the same character. I was actually told... I, I saw this opening day, and I was told by another employee since I worked at a theater... I was told the, uh, the, the, the surprise that Brad Pitt and Ed Norton were the, the same character. And while I was watching it, I forgot. Because the movie is, is, is so engrossing. It actually pulls you in so well that even by the time it got to the reveal at the end I had forgotten and so it was still a it was still a good shock and it was a fantastic explanation to these two characters that you know you watched for an hour and 40 minutes leading up to it and and I still think too the payoff works so well because you're watching it and even if you know you're wondering well how is that working how how are these two guys fighting each other and, you know, the other guys are coming out to watch the fight. And so you're right. like, what's this actually looking like? And then they show the scene of Ed Norton just beating the shit out of himself. And it, it's such a great payoff, that that whole reveal, that it really does make this movie. And, and of course, the ending scene with the, the buildings blowing up and everything. Yeah. It, it's just a, a really good payoff and a good twist ending. And I think if you didn't know... It, it would definitely catch you by surprise. Yeah. And I think now, because and especially once you do know that the two main characters are the same character, it's fun going back and watching the movie, now that you know that, and then try to figure out what all of the ancillary characters, like Angel, what are they seeing <laughs> when Brad Pitt and Ed Norton are having a conversation with each other? The car Or the, like the car the scene. The car scene. Yeah. Those two guys in the back of the seat, what are they experiencing? Here's a guy arguing with himself. Yeah. And they're so brainwashed that they don't even question it. Yeah. Um, so just go back and watch it. And, and even from uh, Marla's standpoint. Yeah. Um, here, here's a guy that is seriously, from her perspective, fucking nuts. Yeah. Um, and from Ed Norton's perspective, she's crazy. And from Brad Pitt's perspective, well, he knows. Yeah. <laughs> so really just from Ed Norton's perspective, yeah. everybody else around him is really crazy. <laughs> But if you actually watch it with, you know, try just try to imagine Marla's standpoint throughout the movie, or any of the other guys in Project yeah. Mayhem. Try to figure out, here's a guy that just told him good job for, for making the smiley face on the building, now he just turned around and yelled at them <laughs> for making a smiley face on a building. Yeah. Just <laughs> Yeah, uh, the, it's it really is, it's got a great duplicity to it. Yeah. You really get into the depths of it. So. Right, and but, but it was that reveal that... I mean, if you knew that going in, going in watching it, it would be a different movie. Yeah, hiding it, and you know, Chuck's writing for the book, and even Fincher, the the way that he directed that book, uh, just really made that ending work. Agreed. for for the story. So yeah, that I mean that that's pretty easy to make a, a list like this. I think uh, it definitely deserves to be there, and not much more needs to be said. Right. But. Yeah. In, in this one, so we're gonna have a number of these. Uh, You'll, you'll either agree with them or you won't, yeah. and a lot of them you probably already. I mean, you've probably seen most of these, so yeah. it's not really a surprise. This is really just our opinions, on our them. opinion of them. So you can 
take it how you want, but you should take it the way we take it. Yeah, because we're, we're usually right. Almost always. <laughs> All right, uh, movie two, The Departed. Uh, I remember this is a movie, it t- another movie it took me a while to see just because uh, it was one I had to kind of watch alone because the my wife didn't particularly care for the cast and the Boston accent really bugs her. <laughs> so she, she couldn't watch it. So it took me a long time to actually get to see this. But the... Uh, Again, just what a what a cast first off for the movie. Yeah. And the fact that everybody dies except for <laughs> Mark Wahlberg by the end of this movie. And and that last scene with Mark Wahlberg <laughs> in the <laughs> in the was it napkin? No, like he, tissue paper boxes, right? He, On his feet. He, he had like yeah, uh, he had just uh, like little booties that yeah. somebody would wear if they're coming into I don't know. Yeah, but that last, Damon walks in the door, he thinks he's got away with it, and just yeah. And and what made especially it's like I remember watching for the first time, and they had built up the characters so much that you kind of expected um, Jack Nicholson. Jack yeah. Nicholson. You expected him to get it in the end, right? Yeah. Um, to some extent, you expected Matt Damon to somehow either get away with it. Right. Or get it in the end. But it was just the blind elevator shot into Leo DiCaprio. Yeah. The, you know, elevator's door open, bam, blood stain on the back of the wall. How how the movie wrapped it up so fast, and then when the other cop came downstairs, and he just gets it in the side of the head. Yeah. It's like, they wrap it up with, okay, yeah, we got five characters that we need to kill off in the next two minutes. Let's wrap this shit up. <laughs> uh, it, it was a, a bit of a murder fest at the end of that movie. <laughs> but again, that's what made it's like here. Here's a world that we are not sugarcoating at all. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that's really what made the movie to begin with. Here are people in Boston. All of them cuss a lot, and you'll get that when we get down to Goodwill Hunting. That's yeah. that's the standard, you know, dialect and uh, vernacular uh, of that region. But then also you have, you know, a true, true to life undercover operation and a true to life drug kingpin. Yeah. Having people just murder each other <laughs> uh, seems to fit. Yeah. And yeah. I think if you try to come up with a happy ending or even a mediocre yeah. ending, you would have failed. Yeah, it, it, it is kind of one of those ones that had to have the, the bad payoff right. to really sell that. You know, in the end, nobody's really winning in this particular situation. Right. Yeah, no, that was, yeah. I absolutely, that's one of the best, one of my favorite movies. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's, it's just so well done. Yeah. All right, moving on to, to one that is on the list definitely because of, of me, uh, is Repo Men. Now, this is probably one you may not have seen. You might have skipped out on this. And I'm talking about the Jude Law, Forrest Whitaker version of this, not the opera one that's out there, um, the the actual movie movie um, has. I don't rarely get caught by twist endings, uh, even if I don't know what's going to happen. I, I rarely get caught off guard, and this one caught me off guard. The fact that essentially the third act is a fantasy is it's just such a good payoff at the end because y- y- it goes through and it, it's kind of. Working this really happy ending angle, they go in, they rip out, e- you know, they scan each other's organs in so that they're not in the system anymore, and then they all go to the islands, and it looks like they're they're scot free, and then it glitches, and you're like, what the fuck was that? And then it cuts back to the scene when he got hit by the metal pipe, and that essentially killed him and made him brain dead for the rest of the movie. And Forrest Whitaker put him on the the fantasy brain machine at that point and it was just such a good payoff to what was a good movie anyways but it just that payoff made that movie all the much sweeter in my opinion yeah yeah I mean it's like I, I remember watching that and I was trying to think of uh, yeah because I mean really you could accept the movie as just a standard uh, they got away with it yeah and, and then they, they flip it on its head uh, which was just you know phenomenal writing yeah for and, and I wouldn't even say it, it was for this movie for Repo Man. It was that ending that really separated it from. Yeah, this is the case ending. of a mediocre movie becoming a great movie. Yeah, without ends. W- without ends. Yeah, yeah. No, totally agree. Yeah. 
So that that's definitely one. If you didn't leave the list beforehand, I'm sorry that we ruined that movie because that's a fantastic payoff. Right, and, and it's one of those that I, I wouldn't even have blamed you if you watched the first 40 minutes of it and said, like, yeah, this is, you know, nothing special. Yeah. And you didn't get to see the part that the movie was made for. Yeah. That, which is the ending. Yeah. So... Uh, if you if you did turn it off and you realized, hey, Repo Man, I don't really care about that one. I'm going to continue watching this video, and we just ruined the ending for you. You should still go and watch it yeah. just for how it ends. Yeah, because it's still really good. To, it, it's a little in in the sense like Fight Club, that you're watching that ending, and when you realize it's fake, it, it's fun to go back and watch it again, and, and you realize, oh yeah, that was a little too easy. That was that did seem like right. Yeah. So, again, definitely worth it if you haven't seen it. Uh, next on the list is an interesting one because <laughs> you it's not so much a surprise ending as a surprise beginning. Right. Uh, and that's Memento. But it still pays off in, in from the beginning to the end because of how you have to take the journey in this movie it is so different. But, again, and it's still another one that you go, oh, man, that's, that's not how I was expecting that to to end up paying off. Yeah, I think I think watching it for the first time, you, you are you are rooting for uh, Guy Pierce to yeah. try to figure out who killed his wife. Uh, and really, it's not until the end of the movie and the beginning of the story that you realize he may have already killed. The person that killed his wife, yeah, and a few other people, yeah, because he doesn't know any better, yeah. Um, it's well, that's doesn't he kill her? Doesn't he give her too much insulin? Yes, and, and so yeah, it's so he's just he's just trying to find people, to, yeah, uh, to blame it but on. He doesn't it. know any better, yeah, and so. that's such. It was such a, a cool payoff for, and, and especially because that movie for a lot of people is really hard to watch just because of its pacing how right. you, you've got to you know you go to a point you stop then you go to another point and that point's going to end where the last one and it just yeah. that, that chunking is so hard to follow that but that final payoff kind of is like oh this is why they had to tell it this way because if they tell it as a straight story you have no sympathy for this character right yeah and it's uh it's it's another one that once you saw the ending and you understand what's going on, it needs to be watched again. Yeah. Because because now, now now you can you can actually follow it. Yeah. And it had such yeah, I mean, it had great lines. Yeah. The the, the, movie the itself was, the <laughs> the, uh, the bathroom scene is still. Yeah. I don't feel drunk. <laughs> I don't feel drunk. Or oh, I'm chasing this guy. <laughs> no, nope, he's chasing me. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. And, and again, that's that's Christopher Nolan. He knows yeah, what he's doing. Yeah. Nolan knows what he's doing, and. Uh, and another example of Guy Pierce being heavily underrated in in, yeah. in movies. Yeah, we like his movies. You just yeah. don't go see them. Yeah. Um, all right. Next one is is cliched. I, I, we won't spend too long on this one, but it does need to be on a list of movies about endings, and that's The Sixth Sense. Um, if you were one of the fortunate people who got to see it before it got ruined, um, which I actually did, I got to see it uh, yeah. opening weekend. And nobody had told me anything about the ending, and that payoff at the end is so good. It's just so reward. It's just like, oh yeah, it, and it makes so much sense when you watch it again. It's another one you watch it that second time, and you pick up on things like the fact that he never talks to the mother, mm -hmm. and that's something I never really caught in the first yeah, watching. Well, the first time you watch it, because you just don't. I mean, it, yeah, I was one of the people also that was allowed to go to the theater without having somebody else already tell me what was going on. I worked there, so well, I got to see it the day before it came out. Right. Um, so, yeah, you just don't pay attention to stuff like that. He never mm -hmm. talked to the mom. He does not talk to his wife when mm -hmm. they had their anniversary dinner in the restaurant. Right. But the, they wrote all of those scenes so well that it was a justifiable occasion you, that he didn't have to. Or, or you felt that the conversation already happened by the time, you know, the other elements were right. being introduced. You know, Haley Joel Osment would walk into the room with him and the mom in there and you assumed they had had the conversation already. Yeah. And and they did a really it was just good storytelling and good just yeah. setup for it. And again that final you know shot when he looks down at his shirt and you know he's got the blood stain and, and you realize he's been dead the whole time. That was right. just really, really cool. Um 
that's it. That's it. Well, that's all. Yeah, that, that, that Every, again. Everybody's that, seen this movie. Everybody knows how yeah. it ends. It just has to be on the list. It, yeah, it, it's one of those ones. And the next movie is is honestly one of those ones too. We don't but, really need to say a whole lot about but, it. We're just going to skip it entirely. We're not even tell you what it is. No, we're going to say. It. We're at least going to say it. <laughs> Empire. Empire Strikes Back. Um, I mean, easily for at least for Crystal Street Comics and everybody who associates with Crystal Street Comics. And most of the Star Wars fans in general, I think most people agree Empire is the best of the movies and has, of course, the best ending with the reveal of, you know, Luke's dad. Yeah, or Clone Wars might be the best. I'm going to slide over here so it okay. smack. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> but, and it, what, you know, it's funny with this movie because, again, everybody knows the line, you know, if you didn't get to go see Star Wars when you were a kid in the theaters, everybody knows the line, Luke, I am your father. Right. Um, and, and so it, it's hard to call it a surprise ending, but it's still such a rewarding payoff. And I think Mark Hamill, because when they shot it, that's not the line of dialogue that was read. Right. Yeah. That reaction to it is so good, and it gets so much better because of what was actually put in place there. And that's... You know, uh, I mean, I know Lucas didn't direct it, but that, you know, he did write the screenplay, so that's a good little bit, you know, yeah. of Lucas when he was, you know, before crazy. Before he started sucking. <laughs> but I, I would say, it's like, you have, for, for Empire, um, you just have nothing going right for the Rebel Alliance at all. Yeah. Um, Luke gets his hand cut off, found, finds out that the most evil thing in the galaxy is his dad. Han gets frozen. Mm -hmm. uh, they get betrayed by Lando. Just nothing goes right. Yeah, I mean it's it's just an entire and the whole movie. Nothing is going right. It starts with that you know the Hoth battle. They're having to evacuate. Yeah, Luke crashes on Dagobah. <laughs> you know the the whole movie. The Millennium Falcon's on the run. Yeah, it, it's it just a, it's it is a series of down notes that just plays so well. Yeah, and it gets climaxed at the end yeah. with all of these things happening, and you know that when the third movie starts, really got nowhere to go. Yeah, other you, than up. Yeah, you you've kind of the whole third movie, and, and you know, to its credit, aside from the Ewoks, you know, the third movie is a good payoff for that. You know, you ramp up. I mean, right oh, yeah. from the get go, it's you start to see, hey, shit's going right. We're gonna we're gonna get to where this is supposed to end at. Right. And and so you know again credits. I mean the the original trilogy is still that's a once a year watch for me. Yeah. And it, it, Empire is is definitely a large part of why it, it makes a once a year watch for me. Uh, next we've got one that might seem a little interesting, but I really think it's an ending that pays off. Um, and that's Chasing Amy. Um, I'm a big Kevin Smith fan. Uh, I love all his films, including I, I like Jersey Girl. I'm one of the few that. No, that's. Yeah, I, I like that movie. But by and far, Chasing Amy is probably my favorite. At least it's my favorite dialogue. Yeah. Um, because of, of Pop, I've got a really strong connection with Jane Silent Bob because it's just one of those movies we would watch and just laugh our asses off. So that's pretty easy for us. But I could watch that every day. Chasing Amy's not really that way for, with me, but the dialogue and the acting is so good, it's hard for me to say that's not Smith's best movie. Right. And the ending has a lot to do with it because... On its surface, Chasing Amy is a romantic comedy. And most romantic comedies in the same way. Guy gets the girl, somehow loses the girl, gets the girl back, happy ending. Chasing Amy, you you don't get that. Guy gets the girl after a lot of trying. And then it, it's such a short time when they're actually in a romance. And then the romance ends and it never comes back because he just never gets it and the, there's just that sad moment at the end when you know Ben brings her the the comic strip the chasing Amy comic and it, it's kind of like this yeah you know I know how I screwed up but at the same time I know this can never be fixed and again it's just it was such a good payoff to what on the surface should have been kind of just a cheesy oh, comedy yeah I mean it's it's hard to name another off the top of my head another romantic comedy and it was it was a romantic comedy with a tragic ending yeah it's it's hard to name another one yeah most of the ones that, I think of that are actually designed as romantic comedies mm -hmm. and not you know romance dramas or right. any of those it's normal for those to end with tragic endings but 
no, this was designed to be funny. Yeah. And, and it is. It's, a, it's still a funny movie. Yeah. Oh. But and then it's still a you oh. know a romance. It just it ends just, sa- it right. ends very sadly and. and Again, I, I think that that speaks world because that has such a, a really strong yeah. ending. And, and I, I, all I think Kevin Smith did is he took, yeah, okay, the happy ending happened when they got together. There's the end of your movie. Yeah. The end of a real movie is how I ended it. Yeah. Uh, let's let's keep it going for a while and, and s- figure out why Tom Hanks doesn't get to stay with Meg Ryan. Right. That's No, that that's perfect. I, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Um, I'm going to let you start off on this next one. All right. Next, we, I'm, I'm combining Rambo, First Blood, and Rocky because they're almost the same movie. Uh, in both of them, Sly Stallone is either given an opportunity or put into an opportunity that he really did not ask for. Uh, he works to overcome it, and ultimately, he fails. That, that's why I would say both Rambo and Rocky are the, they are true depictions of what used to be a considered an epic like you know right. Homer's epics it's like you have this this journey and you can get triumphs but at the end of it they're almost always going to end with a tragic ending right. or to, to these points this Rocky does a great job the underdog still loses in right. the end it's not, hey, yeah, it's like, I'm, I'm the little guy. If I just train hard enough, have enough heart and want it bad enough, I'll win. Right. He wanted it bad enough and still lost. Yeah. That's that's what made Rocky a good movie. Right. Is, I mean, he, and he can still be inspirational in losing because he had a shot and he, he actually did well. Right. But I think if you made him win, it nullifies Apollo's character yeah. in Rocky. And Rambo, um, he, he he's destined to lose from the beginning uh, of, of Rambo. I mean, he's he's just put into a situation that he is just now associate associating himself back with the war and realizes there's it's a no win scenario. Right. He's stuck in the woods at this point. Sooner or later, they're just going to send enough people after him. Right, but. I, I put those in the, as pretty much the same category because I see them as old style epics, right? Or oh, um, where you know where it's standard myths when you think of you know th- this is how writing was thousands of years ago. This is just how this is you know step one, step two, step three, and at the end of step three, your hero is not gonna be the victor in the end, right? Um, and that's why I, I slap the two of them together, and that's also why I think they should be on this list, just because they don't end well. It's right. like here's an inspirational story, but you can have an ending where the guy loses, your hero loses, and it can still be an inspirational story. Yeah. No, no I totally agree there. I'm, you know, I, I'm not going to lie. I, I've never seen First Blood. Now, I've seen Rocky. Um, and I've also seen the the story of the guy it's based on, so it it's appropriate that he loses in Rocky because the guy did end up losing that fight to to Ali. Um, but uh, you know, I, I won't try and, and critique Rambo because I've never actually seen it. And I'm not going to say a damn thing about the movie that he's about to talk to. I've never seen it. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to talk about Jason Goes to Hell, and and this one. <laughs> This one makes the the list for a completely different reason from all the others. This one's ending doesn't necessarily make the movie any better because this movie is shit. This is to say a, a Friday the Thirteenth movie is shit is bad because they are shitty movies by their definition. To say this one is the shittiest is pretty bad. I I am a fan of the slasher genre. I can watch a Friday the Thirteenth movie. I can watch a Freddy Krueger movie. You know, I don't go in for Shakespearean acting in these things. I go in to watch some teenagers die horrible deaths. Um, Jason Goes to Hell was just so weird, though, because they kill Jason in the opening scene, and then his heart is jumping from body to body throughout the whole movie. And then in the end, I even forget how it happens. They, they, they finally super kill him and his heart is dead or whatever he comes back if, if I'm not mistaken at the end because the, the hockey mask has to be there so they kill him but the, the payoff at the end of this movie is so great for horror movie fans because you've got the mask just sitting there on the dirt and then all of a sudden Freddy's claw comes up and pulls it down and you're just like 
holy shit, they're gonna do something together. And the payoff takes like ten years until we get Freddy vs. Jason. And I just remember watching that ending and I'm just like, when's it coming? When's it coming? When's it coming? And it took fucking forever. Now, I personally thought the payoff was pretty good. I love Freddy vs. Jason. I think, what, we saw that one on a pre-launch. The Everclear is kicking my ass. That's still the best part of the movie. movie. But I'm not going to say much more, but that's an example of a, a, a shitty movie getting a pretty cool ending. And so that's why I thought that deserved to be on this list. Um... Next uh, set of movies um, is probably these. These are tops. I mean, the the two of them are the tops. The other one is yeah, a, the, kind of a throwaway. The, but these are these are movies that they come on TV. I'll watch it until commercial break, and then I'll put it in the DVD yeah. so I can keep watching it without a commercial. <laughs> um, the Ocean's movies, Ocean's Eleven, Twelve, Thirteen, the the uh, the newer ones, not the uh, the original Rat Pack right. film. Which actually is really sad. It is. It's so, it's so sad in comparison to the to the George Clooney ones. Um, threw away millions of dollars. Yeah. Oh, so, but so so talking about the new ones and with the ending in this sense is, and a couple of movies have this nowadays. But we kind of felt the oceans ones were the the ones to talk about, and it's the the payoff of not necessarily like a punch ending but just 20 minutes of really good ending from everything that had been set up throughout the entire movie. And you're like, oh, that's why they did that. Oh, right. oh that's... yeah. You know, even even 12, which, you know, is by and far the, the worst of... 12 is my least favorite of yeah. the three, but I think 12 had the biggest... really the biggest setup, because yeah. from the beginning of the movie, Daniel Ocean and his crew were one step ahead or multiple yeah. steps ahead of the night fox. the night fox yeah yeah so they were winning the entire movie and, and but you didn't that you thought they were losing yeah and like the scene when they win is such a throwaway scene it's the train station scene is essentially when they've won yeah you know and it's it's just such a throwaway scene because they're sitting there and that's the scene when they're talking about how old Danny is uh-huh and and so you're like, what's this scene in here for other than some cheap laughs at the expense of George Clooney's age? Um, and you later find out that this this is the whole payoff, is that train scene. Yeah. And everything else from there is just a, a sham. Yeah, it's just, just a ruse to, to fool uh, the Night Fox. Um, so I, I would still say, yeah, it's like, as far as the three movies go, it's... I'll watch Ocean's Eleven and Ocean's Thirteen... I would say four times as much as yeah. twelve. Yeah. Um, but as far as a, you know, I'm not entirely sure who to even blame for why. I'm, yeah, it's just, just the story. It what was. wasn't as, and I think because eleven and twelve, you could always tell it's like they seem to be having fun. Right. E- even when they were failing. Yeah. Or things weren't going their way. Yeah, there was it still, still had a kind of a lighthearted feel to their entire crew. Twelve seemed just just like a down, a little heavy-handed. Yeah, for yeah, for, for, for the for, type of movie it is. Yeah, but again, these endings it's just like the those little things, and then they set up to those long runs of when everything starts to to flow, and it's so good. It, Eleven and thirteen are just so much yeah. fun to watch. You know, when they start to, to get all the games rigged in 13 and everybody's winning and you start to see the counters go everywhere and Pacino, yeah, Pacino's down in the lair and he's just flipping right. out. and It's just such a good payoff. And, and same with 11 when they're screwing over Benedict. It's just... Yeah, I, w- I would say 11 was still the best indie yeah. of the three. Mainly because you expected it in 12 and 13. Yeah. But th- they had when they go to the casino the first time, they have the uh, the shot from inside what would become the SWAT van, yeah. and they paint out and just show this uh, the evergreen yeah. car freshener. It's like y- you could dismiss that as yeah, all right, that's Soderbergh, right? He does things like that. Um, but it's like everything they did in that was explained in the last twenty minutes. Yeah. It's like, yeah, this is why we needed to build an exact replica of the, of the yeah. vault. It wasn't a practice. Right, it was to... Uh, and, I, you know, you, you think back on... Again, you know, going back on these endings, and you always have to with, with good endings because they kind of change the perspective of the whole movie. And you think back to the line, you know, oh, we're building it for practice? Yeah, something like that. Right. And yeah. it, it's, a, it's a throwaway line the first time you watch the movie. It's okay, yeah, okay. 
and then that payoff it's like oh shit they built it to film the fake yeah is just that's so good <laughs> right uh good yeah so again the oceans movies if you haven't seen them i don't know what's wrong with you go <laughs> go see these these are these are solid solid films uh we're gonna wrap up all uh, right uh, we, we probably should have put this somewhere else and ended with something like The Departed. Uh, but we don't think that far ahead. We didn't. No. Uh, we typed this up and it started. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess in our video about good endings, we're going to have kind of a mediocre ending. That's true. That's true. I but think that's the way to go, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I think that's don't, the way. Don't set the bar too high. No. That way it'll be easy to do another one right, in the future. Right. No. Uh, <laughs> but this this one's mostly on you, because you've seen it a lot more than I have. All right. I, I went with uh, Good Will Hunting. Now, as far as endings go, it does not have a surprise ending. It doesn't have a, oh, shit, I didn't see that, or, you know, I'm su It didn't have a surprise ending. Um, but it did have the entire movie actually had one of the best character developments and in the end with Matt Damon's character finally realizing through Robin Williams therapy the type of person person he could be and then he's finally driving off to California in the end and it's actually I think it's one of the only movies we have up there that has a happy ending yeah, 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 yeah. No, we we like sad. Endings. Well, Fight Club was a happy ending. <laughs> well, everybody's out of debt at the end of Fight Club, <laughs> that's so right. no, I'd, I'd go for the ending. <laughs> yeah, that's no, it. that's true. But you know, it's funny. It's just uh, on a tangent. One of the worst endings, in my opinion, was an unhappy ending that I've ever seen. Still in a movie that you know, The Mist is still oh. one of the fucking worst <laughs> endings. That's an example of how not to do an ending. And if you haven't seen that movie, I'll talk about that one later <laughs> in some more depth because that's how you don't end movies. Yeah, I have friends that love that ending. But either either, either way, yeah. um, for for Will Hunting, and really what made the ending worth it is you could have, you could have taken an ending either way. It could have been a tragic movie where Matt Damon's character just refused to grow up and accept the, you know, how damn smart he was. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also, it was some of Ben Affleck's best acting when they're on the construction site and Ben Affleck tells him, you know, every day he comes to his house hoping he's not there. Right. That That yeah. is one of the best scenes yeah. in movies. And the best dialogue, and it's a good reason why Ben Affleck can write and direct great movies that he's doing now. Yeah. And Matt Damon is... Has always chosen good movies. Yeah. I mean, almost always chosen good Been at the top roles. of, when I write a good movie, who do I want for it? And you have a handful of actors, and Matt Damon is a lot of times now at the top of the list. Yeah. And it's because of this movie, and how it was done, and then how they wrapped it up, that yeah. turned it into such a good movie. Right. Yeah. So, that's, a, that's our first uh, video like this. We're going to do a lot more of these. We're going to throw together some lists. We're going to um, maybe throw in some more actual, like, top ten style lists as opposed to kind of just us talking about stuff we really like but then again you know we paid for a website so we want to put some fucking content on there that's so. right and with any luck no, I'll, let, I'll let Graham worry about that yeah yeah you see this this stuff back here <laughs> maybe that's something by the time you're looking yeah, at it yeah we'll see 